Hello, hello again. We are pleased to welcome again the participants of the InterES 4.0 Youth Public Diplomacy Forum. There are two important sessions ahead, the case session and the brainstorming. After we finish the forum in several hours, we will soon send you a certificate of participation along with a thematic brochure on the results of the forum. But for this, we need to work intensively together. Please be active and become part of a large international team of public diplomats. And we are happy to move on the next session of the forum, the case session, which is called Successful Practices of Youth Organizations in the Field of Public Diplomacy. The experts of this session are people who implement public diplomacy projects in practice. They are experienced professionals who can be your partners in the future. So, listen carefully, delve into the cases and take the best of them for implementation in your country. The first speaker of this session is an expert who can help you to find the resources for your projects. Sergei Arlov, the Deputy Executive Director of the Alexander Gertschakov Public Diplomacy Fund, Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Akil. Uh, it's a really pleasure to be here with you today. It's not my first appearance in this forum, but it's first time I'm here in person. And it's really, really great honor to me to present to you, uh, dear participants in online and person format, our activities and our cases of uh, public diplomacy. Uh, just a few words about our foundation. So uh, we're a non-governmental organization. Uh, we're acting independently. And uh, our main mission is promote and develop public diplomacy between Russian and foreign organizations. And uh, in uh, particular uh, with non-governmental sector. But also we organize uh, many, many events uh, on annual basis with students, with experts, and etc., and uh, on different duration at all. And BRICS, uh, it's one of our main direction in this field. Uh, so, uh, because I have just a few minutes today, uh, I would like to present you our main program uh, uh, that's called uh, Into Russia. It's a fellowship program for young specialists who are living abroad on different direction in journalism, in public diplomacy, in international relations, in medicine, in uh, theater and uh, cinema, uh, arts. Uh, and uh, this is a great opportunity to know Russia better and you have uh, uh, a possibility to visit Russia for a month and be a part of big international group and work with leading Russian specialists in different directions. So, uh, we are welcome everybody from Interias uh, family in Interias uh, forum and we will ha happy to see you here in Russia there. Thank you. Thank you, uh, dear Sergei. Very interesting. Let's continue our case session and I am happy to introduce to our Brazilian colleague, Rodrigo Reis, Executive Director, uh, Director of the Instituto Global Attitude. The floor is yours. Really good to be here. I would like to thank all the team that has made this possible. This for sure is an opportunity for networking, for connecting with people from all BRICS countries and expanded BRICS, new partners that might be joining us in the future. Uh, my name is Rodrigo Rees, um, as introduced. I'm the founder of Global Attitude Institute. We are an NGO. We are a non-governmental, non-to-profit organization that has been working for the past years with specifically public diplomacy and multilateralism, strengthening multilateralism in the international sphere. Uh, Brazil and, and, and its BRICS partners are very important, and in my opinion, that's the multilateralism that the world needs. We need to see a new approach to, di to diplomacy, a new approach to multilateralism, and to key partners uh, in the world 
and BRICS can present itself as this opportunity. Um, in terms of the work that we have been doing, uh, we've been working with young people uh, having the chance to engage in international forum, international activities. And we have deployed uh, more than 10 years ago, a program called Civil Diplomacy, which is the idea of young people being able to join and participate in the international forum. So we have been working with BRICS, with the G20, with United Nations, with the WTO, the World Trade Organization, um, and so many more international forums that welcome and, and, and it, it is possible to be accredited to participate in this forum. So we've been working with the international universities in Brazil, but as well as uh, the private sector to make it possible, the exchange of people, you know, the participation and, and young people to be heard in this sphere. It is not easy to, to participate sometimes because of financial constraints, visas, access to these forums. But we here in Brazil, we've been, we've been quite experts in terms of bridging this opportunity and bringing together the, the people that want to participate and the forums that are welcome civil, civil society. This is very brief. Uh, we have uh, just a few minutes to, to present that, but I'm very happy to take questions and to clarify um, any doubts that you may have in terms of youth participation, multilateralism, and NGOs, the role of NGOs in Brazil and abroad. Thanks again for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Although it's very brief, uh, I'm very happy to take questions in the future. Thank you. Very much, dear uh, Rodrigo. We wish you good luck in your future work. And we move on to the uh, next case, next speaker, Pavel Antipov, Chief Executive Officer of Antipov IT, who develops web services, mobile apps, and blockchain projects, Russia. His case is related to te technology. Pavel, the floor is yours, please. Can you hear us, Pavel? Yes. Hello. So, we very nice to see you. Please share your opinion, your case with us. The floor is yours, Pavel. Okay. Um, can you give me a... Uh, Authorities, yeah. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Are you seeing my screen? Not yet. Just a moment. Yes, we see it. Nice. <clears throat> One second. Next, Giacomo. You can start. Okay. Thanks. Uh, hello, everyone. Again, my name is Pavel Antipov, and today I would like to raise a very interesting topic about how culture and language barriers, which have probably existed since the very beginnings of humanity, can be overcome with the help of artificial intelligence. Let's start by diving into history and looking at this incredible chart. Uh, it shows uh, the span at uh, which AI algorithm uh, solve various tasks invented by humans. The horizontal black line on the chart represents the level um, at which an average human solves tasks. When an algorithm cross crosses the line, it begins to perform better than a human. The chart allows us to track the dynamics or of neural networks reaching human level performance. Notice that the line of technologi technological development in the AI field is becoming virtually vertical. 
uh, or consider the latest study where GPT-4 was able to solve five out uh, of 10 Olympic level mathematics problems. The potential is colossal. Let's explore what a GPT assistant is. Using uh, ChatGPT as an example, in overall, it's a chat with artificial intelligence where you can have a meaningful dialogue. It will grasp the uh, essence of your question like a human. It can identify cause and effect relationships, make logic deduction, maintain context, perform various tasks, uh, uh, and so on. <clears throat> you can think uh, of such a chat as a conversation with a very intelligent, uh, intelligent person. This chat displays 10, uh, 20 different exams from various uh, universities around the world, covering a wide range of uh, subjects, including economics, biology, history, mathematics, uh, and so on. The human uh, level of, of uh, passing this exam is marked with a red line. GPT-4 was able to solve about 70% of these exams better than a human. Now, uh, let's move on. Um, to the second part and discuss the general difficulties that can arise in communication between speakers of different uh, cultures. I have identified uh, four points. First, language barriers. One of the main challenges in communication lies um, in the direct language differences, including lexical, grammatical, and phonetical aspects, which uh, can significantly hinder understanding between speakers of different languages. Next, culture differences. Differences it's in culture context and uh, values that can lead to mis uh, misinterpretation of messages. For example, what is acceptable in one culture may be perceived as unacceptable or even offensive if uh, in another. The third point uh, is stereotypes and uh, biases. Uh, existing stereotypes and biases, uh, views can be an uh, abstract or to open and uh, constructive dialogue as they form a false image even before communication begins. And fourth, uh, perceptions and interpretation of information. Differences in culture norms and uh, values can lead to different uh, perception and interpretation of same message completely differently, which complicates the achievement of uh, mutual understanding and uh, can even cause conflict. <clears throat> the communication problem has always existed and uh, persists uh, at all levels, from the level of inter uh, interpersonal and social relationships, relationships within individual countries to the level of international relations and even entire civilization in modern world. And I consider it one of the most important problems of humanity, solving which we will move to the next stage of development. And now uh, let's move on uh, to the concluding part. I think. Okay, Pavel, you, uh, Pavel, Pavel, your uh, presentation is not moving. Please uh, change oh, the slides. Mm -hmm. I see. Yes, we can achieve. Mm -hmm. Okay, potential. Sorry. Yes, continue, please. <laughs> um, and now let's move on to the concluding part. I think you uh, appreciate the potential uh, of GPT models. So why not use this technology to Im uh, improve negotiation processes and solve global issues? AI technology can significantly in change international relations. For example, the technology, uh, the negotiation processes by reducing uh, the time spent on negotiations and uh, increasing the number of successful agreements that uh, satisfy all negotiation participants. Moreover, this technology can uncover non-obvious insights that could, could improve the lives of millions of people. GPT even now uh, can, for example, uh, have an access, for instance, to reports, uh, regulation uh, and the goals of uh, participants. Uh, GPT agents could analyze this data and propose ready-made solutions that uh, take into account the interest of all parties and uh, the most important global goals. <clears throat> uh, utilizing the full potential AI, we can significantly change efficiency in uh, negotiations and international cooperations. 
achieve, um, achieving truly remarkable results. Remarkable results uh, through collective actions uh, guided by logic, relationship, and techno uh, technological capabilities. With the proper IT infrastructure in place, AI assistance will uh, autonomously identify issues and propose strategy for their resolution, exchanging information with each other. Such GPT agents, uh, <coughs> agents uh, will analyze millions of scenarios, offering solutions uh, based, uh, based on logic and real-time data, prioritizing uh, the most pressing issues of nations and considering available resources for their resolutions. Uh, we can start implementing uh, such a project right now. To do this, we need to come together and create a unified registry of, of uh, verified uh, data for the BRICS countries, uh, where each uh, uh, country could upload current document, regulations, strategy, reports uh, of over materials, uh, or uh, provide access to its uh, current data. Uh, that's all. Uh, thanks for your attention. I'm sorry for maybe I... Too, uh, took too long. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Thank you, Pavel. Uh, we wish you, we wish you uh, good luck in your ideas. Uh, as you mentioned about AI, it is very much important nowadays. And now let me introduce an Indian speaker, Dr. Jay Kumar Venkateshan, Director General of Harpy Airspace, Visionary Board Member of Upgrade Technology Contest, Deputy Chairman of the International Academy of Space Law. Please, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Akhil, for inter great introduction. So uh, I think uh, it was a very interesting topic that we are going to talk about the space-related space diplomacy. I think this may be the first time maybe the people are hearing. So please allow me to share my screen if uh, the host can uh, enable me. Ask to disable participants screen sharing. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, this is, uh, we are trying to strengthen mostly the, as a diplomacy, as you think, the easiest way to uh, peaceful activity can carry out to the space activities. I believe in this. So I started doing something on a BRICS yes. uh, plus countries that will be cooperating in India. So most probably we are discussing about the space exploration as a tool for diplomacy and the future cooperation. That may be the importance to the people like we say uh, the BRICS, how the, it is important to the BRICS uh, can enable our countries to create a, a wonderful ecosystem, mostly the technological advancements and uh, most importantly, how uh, really we can able to process and to, uh, I mean, like national pride we have, but still we know like we have to contribute mostly in a technological advancement. So uh, it is a matter with the policy and also we need to make, to do the framework. So potentially we are fostering into the collaboration and strengthening the diplomatic ties between the BRICS plus countries. So, so most importantly, you know, like we have to plant a seed now today because we BRICS is growing to BRICS plus. So as an importance now, we have to create a diplomacy and a, and a wonderful in cooperation and space activities that I was proposing to that and driving the economic growth development and mostly important to the global challenges, for example, like climate change, disaster management, and also mostly sustainable development. Most importantly, we have to carry out the peaceful activities to ensure the space remains peaceful and accessible and uh, space for everyone. So next is like, we, what is the current progress in the space diplomacy? It's like mostly collaboratively effectively in the satellite launches among the, I mean, launch capabilities between the, the country, for example, in India, ISRO, we have in Russia, Los Cosmos and Brazil, we have the different uh, launch agents, I mean, national space, space agencies, they are come forward uh, to implement and uh, collaborate to working together. I mean, recently, one of the MOUs have been as a, India is chairing as a BRICS country. So they have signed a collaborative agreement for a satellite information, like a satellite data sharing for the various info, I mean, various applications. So giant space missions that will be in collaborative advancing in scientific 
activity for exploring the new frontiers and example some uh, i mean we can be like east india and also china and uh, uh, russia will be pay yeah you know like a launch pad to the many of the our con BRICS plus countries national satellites programs and uh, some of the challenges that we know the spaces become most uh, increasing the congested and also mostly we contesting with the uh, many uh, western the countries and at the same time we have to need the peaceful cooperation among the competition and uh, it is most important to avoid the conflict and uh, to create the resolutions to create the enabling the solutions for creating the uh, mechanisms that will ensure mostly everyone uh, can equally to accessible to the space so that will create uh, like sustainable development on activity one of the case studies i would like to discuss with you guys on mostly the brics cooperation that created the remote sensing satellite constellation that was uh, uh, i mean happened in 2021 and because in the that was the founding uh, that is the biggest giant step that has been taken by uh, isro and uh, the roscosmos and the chinese space agency and the brazil national space agency south africa and also they come forward to enhancing working on something remote sensing satellites that you can establish exchanging the information of sharing data and uh, example like uh, understanding the disasters and understanding the weather monitoring and high resolution uh, image sharing between the countries and promoting the sustainable development that is mostly focusing on the goals that uh, creating the peaceful environment and also they protect the environment that is the most important thing and also to protect the natural resources and also to see, save the sea water everything so some of the example the constellation is used to monitor the deforestation and the agriculture that was the most important thing and also water contamination and also natural disasters that we can help each other in the how the BRICS countries can able to develop and in technology collaboration in the sense of demonstrating missions that is an ability to work together in space exploration. The future aspects, you can say the success will be the project as a possibly further collaboration in space-based initiatives and fostering that will be the economic growth and scientific advancement in this region particularly. Next will be, this is like economic opportunities in a big uh, space exploration that is also create a big BRICS economy. It's like a multi-billion dollar industry. This is significantly economical growth is happening between, you know, like Roscosmos and ISRO and the Chinese space agencies and South Africa and uh, Brazil and plus countries. So they are looking for the opportunities and innovative advancement technologies that will create a new jobs and industry. That is a great spin-off for the other sectors to get benefit. So mostly this will be mostly resourceful. And uh, this is very important, the case study that was, was uh, telling about the India's BRICS chairmanship, the space agencies that time uh, they when exchange the collaborations and they allow the each one of the, some of the satellites that allowed for use for the international usage. It's not for under the BRICS cooperation agreement and um, this I'm, this is my slide, uh, last slide. So uh, you can uh, you can see me some of the takeaways that in space diplomacy is, is plays a major role in BRICS plus countries in India and especially promoting this peaceful cooperation and economic growth and addressing the global challenges most effectively in the satellite launches and uh, data sharing and the joint development missions that with uh, with the uh, BRICS countries plus we can give subsidized price among the economic cooperation agreement something and the challenge is something mostly we committed to address the peaceful and uh, to avoid the conflict resolution mechanisms so that will help in the future and also mostly the BRICS uh, remote sensing satellites that is the one of the showcase that can create the diplomacy in a high advancing the scientific knowledge that will promote in the sustainable uh, development so by uh, working together with the BRICS countries that is uh, unlocking the new potential to the humankind so I'd like to good, wish you good luck to discuss in the topic uh, you know like in uh, maybe in offline or maybe I can write in a question so this is my the this was the, my picture is enclosed in international space station you know like so it's my friend Sergey Kostakov. So we are promoting and engaging in a, a peaceful and friendship activity. So this is my contact details, and um, I'm ending now my talk, my presentation. So thanks one and all for uh, actively listening to me, and uh, uh, thank you, thank you for the organizer to inviting me as a uh, you know like one of the speakers and the panelists. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. Jayakumar. And now let's move to South Africa. South African BRICS Youth Association is a good partner of our project office. Sevo Marab uh, Marabane, 
South African BRICS Youth Association Director for Stakeholders Relations. Glad to see you. Thank you very much, uh, my dear friends. Um, if I can be allowed to share my screen, please. All right, thank you very much. As mentioned, my name is Tepo Murabane, and I'm from the South African BRICS Youth Association, and I serve the association as the Stakeholder Relations Director. Um, as the BRICS Youth uh, Association in South Africa, we found that there was a need uh, for us to be able to play a role in public diplomacy through social uh, uh, conventions. So we then came together as a group of young and enthusiastic young people in South Africa and, and formulated the South African BRICS Youth Association, registered with the, uh, the, the South African Department of Social Development in the year 2018. This allowed us to have NPO functionality. And in recent times, we were then afforded um, the social development tax status, where we can afford our funders some tax breaks within our, our tax regime in South Africa. We then uh, to started formulating how we will serve our immediate community uh, through various uh, communication um, and, and, and advocacy means for young people to be able to play a part in public diplomacy. And this is why we came up with our now um, vision and mission where we pro advance and promote the uh, global uh, South cooperation and becoming the leading voice for youth within the South African context and through other multilateral platforms. We actually ad advocate for the South, uh, African perspective by also engaging other African countries and bringing them along on our BRICS journey. Currently, our leadership structure sits at uh, 10 international board members, nine executive committee members, and 27 management committee members and over 3,000 members within the organization itself. Our strategic priorities are mainly centered around youth and youth participation. So we look at youth development, youth entrepreneurship through various programs where we empower young people that are in business. Um, we speak to peace, security throughout our, our BRICS uh, uh, plus counterparts. We speak to advocacy, international relations and cooperation. The departments we have, I'm not gonna um, go through them individually, but we have nine departments in total. I serve under the stakeholder relations department, but all these departments serve the organization as one uh, well-oiled machine so that we can actually serve the, the, our, our immediate um, jurisdiction and the, the BRICS Plus platforms. The importance of pu public diplomacy for us is, is threefold. We look at enriching cultural experiences and tolerance throughout uh, the BRICS Plus uh, communities. We work at bilateral uh, growth and multilateral growth through trade, engaging in economic benefits through people to people in engagements. And lastly, we look also look at uh, enhancing security for all in a multi by multipolarization of the world order. Um, the lessons we, well, the biggest lesson we have taken from public diplomacy in South Africa is soft power. As you all know, our, our rich history is filled with aggression and, and, and intolerance. But becoming a, 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 a member of this such a platform as, as, as BRICS Plus has afforded us the opportunity to use persuasion and, 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 and engagement through people-to-people -people interactions, which has then learned us or, or, or taught us the, the use of soft power in advocating and, or advancing the, the, the greater uh, uh, population. Um, the South African BRICS Youth Association for 2024 has a number of programs. Um, I'm going to highlight the, 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 the most uh, pertinent one, which is the South African uh, BRICS Youth Plus Youth Innovation Summit, which is to be held in, in a month's time, where we, we bring young people across the BRICS nations and Africa to come and present uh, their innovations for a, a chance to be able to 
advance their projects. Um, we also have uh, the South Africa BRICS Plus forums and uh, the summer school that is also taking place at a later stage in the year. We are actively uh, working on the cultural festival whereby we allow for more tolerance and social cohesion in, 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 in cultural activities. We have a number of partners and we have aligned ourselves with many organizations within uh, the BRICS nations, within South Africa itself, and within Africa. Um, the, the, they are as follows. You may uh, have a look on our presentation to see them uh, further. And I, at this point, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to present our project as the South African BRICS Youth Association. Thank you very much. Russia BRICS Youth Project Office for International Youth Cooperation. Uh, in my opinion, it is the main NGO which strengthens BRICS youth interaction year after year. And now I would like to welcome Kira Ivanova, coordinator of the Russia BRICS Project Office. She will be te uh, telling us about the different formats of interesting youth cases. Kira, the floor is yours. Hello, dear friends. I'm glad to greet you all on behalf of the Russia BRICS Project Office for International Youth Cooperation, which is aimed to support the systemic interaction of young people and youth organizations in Russia and the BRICS Plus countries. We work at the intersection of government, universities, public organizations, and civil society. So the Russia BRICS Project Office for International Youth Cooperation is based in the city of Ulyanovsk, Russia. It was founded by the Federal Agency for Youth Affairs in September 2020. And since then, different projects designed to support and improve cross-cultural ties between young people from the BRICS Plus countries are being held by our team. The basis of such interaction uh, consists of projects on educational and cultural exchanges. All our events are free of charge and are held in English. BRICS Plus format uh, provides even more opportunities for cooperation. It allows all in interested states to enter joint projects with the BRICS countries. As it has already been said, uh, this year Russia chairs BRICS and five events of our project office have been included into the BRICS event calendar 2024. As you can see, our project office works in different humanitarian directions public diplomacy, creative industries, volunteering, ecology, youth entrepreneurship, cultural cooperation, media, education, cross-cultural communication, research, sports, and many others. So let me tell you a little about our major events in order to share various formats of activities as elements of public diplomacy. So just like in 2020, when Russia was also the chair of BRICS, we will, uh, for the second time, be the organizers of the Youth BRICS Summit, where we will also host the meeting of youth ministers and the BRICS Youth Council meeting. The BRICS Youth Summit will be held in the city of Ulyanovsk, Russia, in July, and of course the new five countries, uh, the five new members of BRICS, will be invited to take part in it as well. More than 200 participants will discuss the current situation and opportunities for the development of youth cooperation between the BRICS countries in a wide range of areas. Well, um, this is actually our public diplomacy forum, InterYES. The InterYES forum this year is held within the BRICS Expert School, which takes place in the city of Ulyanovsk from April 15 to April 20. The experts from uh, the, the BRICS countries are going to teach young Russian leaders about the alliance and its current processes. The International BRICS Youth Camp is also our annual event, which takes place in the Ulyanovsk region. The purpose of the camp is to promote the further development of practice-oriented cooperation between youth leaders and organizations of the BRICS countries. This year, its topic is going to be art, and the participants will create a joint art object in the format of plain air. The International Youth Volunteer Case Conference BRICS to You is also held annually online. Active young people from BRICS Plus countries interested in volunteering improve their volunteer skills and understanding of the main cultural characteristics of the BRICS countries as well as get acquainted with examples of successful international volunteer projects to upgrade the quality of international youth events. Um, talking about volunteers, this QR code will help you to join 
the ranks of our media volunteers. Today we have more of more than 50 of them. They share information about the events of the project office in their media resources pro bono in order to attract new participants to our events. And in the end of the year, um, all of them get a certificate of appreciation. Of course, we really value them. Um, a large photo, a large scale photo exhibition, the BRICS universe. I know that the next speaker is going to tell you about this wonderful project in detail. I'll just mention that it's a great honor to work with real cosmonauts and I really hope uh, each of you will have the opportunity to see these pictures one day. In April uh, 2022, we held the International Art Residency of Creative Industries in Uyanovsk. Representatives of various creative industries came from 11 BRICS Plus countries to conduct master classes and present their products. Creative Cooperation Program UNESCO Creative Cities of the BRICS countries are together is the project that took the first place in the Russian Event Awards 2022. More than 300 people from 25 countries of the world, of the world took part in six online meetings where representatives of 28 cities belong, belonging to the UNESCO Creative Cities Network and located on the territory of the five BRICS countries shared their unique ex experience and reasons that had allowed their municipalities to obtain the status of UNESCO Creative Cities. Also, uh, we've organized the project Ornaments of the BRICS countries. About 50 young people from five national teams of the BRICS countries have carried out research on the ethnic patterns of their countries and as a result, an exhibition has been created representing the national ornaments of the five countries. We are now uh, exhibiting it in different cities of Russia and in the BRICS countries in a digital format. It's a product that we are happy to offer to all who is interested, just contact me. The main purpose of this project is preservation and promotion of the cultural heritage of the BRICS countries. We actively practice bilateral cooperation programs, formats. For example, we work organizers of the Russian Chinese Youth Forum Volga Yanzi, of the South African uh, Russian Bilateral Youth Forum together with the South African BRICS Youth Association Sabia. And in December uh, 2024, we are going to organize an online conference, Modern Russian Indian Humanitarian Cooperation and Prospects for Youth and Geo Diplomacy. Its purpose is to train and familiarize young people with successful cases on the development of NGO diplomacy between India and Russia. The program of creative cooperation between Russia and China in the field of design consisted of 10 online meetings where participants got acquainted with the best practices of Russian and Chinese experts in the field of design, as well as visits of Russian and Chinese delegations to Russia and China. The program promoted acquaintance with the enterprises of the creative cluster and creative entrepreneurs of these countries. Uh, this year, we will create and publish a collection of ten Russian and five um, and uh, Russian and Brazilian folk fairy tales uh, with illustrations in Russian and Portuguese. Presentations of the book will be held in the cities of Ulyanovsk, Russia, and Brasilia, Brazil. Since 2021, uh, the project office holds its own sessions at the International BRICS Plus Municipal Forum in Saint Petersburg. So um, I guess, yes, this is, these are basically our major projects. Please save our contacts, be in touch. Uh, our events are attended by young leaders from more than 50 countries. We are always open to cooperate. And if you have any project ideas, you are more than welcome to contact us. And of course, hope to see you at our events. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Kira. And dear participants, please prepare your questions and ask them in the Zoom chat. And if you don't mind, Kira, please answer the questions from our uh, participants. 
So let's continue. And uh, now uh, let's hear about the BRICS universe, the international project which is initiated by Russia, implemented in BRICS countries and described by our Indian colleague, Suprajit Barwa, media volunteer at Russia BRICS project office for international youth cooperation. PhD student at ITMO University in St. Petersburg. Suprajit, we welcome you. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to my dear colleagues and friends. My name is Subrajit Barua, and as I was introduced, I am a media volunteer for the Russia BRICS Project Office for International Youth Cooperation, and also a PhD student at ITMO University in St. Petersburg, Russia. And today, I'm going to talk to you about the amazing work that BRICS Universe is doing, not only in Russia, but across the globe, through its fascinating exhibition of photographs. But first of all, let me introduce you to one of the main pillars of this project, the Nizhny Novgorod Planetarium named after G.M. Grechka. The first digital planetarium in Russia is not only a center for the popularization of knowledge in astronomy and cosmonautics, but also a platform for spectacular events, meetings, and much more. In its recent history, the planetarium has been host to various exhibitions and face-to-face -face meets with cosmonauts, making it the epicenter for space education, outreach, and networking. Another key player in this project is the Creative Industries Foundation of the Ulyanovsk region. Established in 2012, this group of excellent leaders work tirelessly towards supporting creative entrepreneurs, developing smaller regions, interacting with UNESCO, working with embassies, and so on. Here on the screen, you can see some of the biggest achievements and milestones of the Creative Industries Foundation of Olyanov's region, and I won't lie, these are some very impressive stats. Now, coming to BRICS universe. This project idea was born thanks to the success of the UNESCO Creative Cities of BRICS countries Art Together, an right. event that took place in 2022 organized at the initiative of the Russia BRICS Project Office for International Youth Cooperation. This event saw more than 300 participants from 25 countries communicating and interacting with each other on a common platform. But the project BRICS Universe was propelled into orbit by the state space corporation Roscosmos, which recognized the BRICS countries as the most important partners in space exploration and research for Russia over the years. Being an Indian, I can vividly recall the historic space flight of Rakesh Sharma, the first Indian in space, on board the Soyuz with fellow cosmonauts 40 years ago. It's really nostalgic. Here are a few more press releases that complement my example, showing the long-lasting cooperation between Roscosmos and the space agencies of the BRICS countries. Let's talk about the vision of BRICS universe. This unique photo exhibition aims to unite BRICS countries through the power of space and art, promoting scientific and technical achievements of Russian cosmonauts and the values of humanitarian cooperation. These exhibits of photos of UNESCO creative cities and the BRICS countries taken from space by Russian cosmonauts, as well as photos of unique space objects and cities taken by photographs on Earth is really mesmerizing. And this exhibit is not only targeted towards the officials and space technologists, but also to the youth, especially those who are interested in space, modern technologies, international cooperation, as well as artistic skills, such as photography. Because this project connects space and humanity through art and science, the BRICS Universe project aims towards sustainable development, not only on Earth, but also far beyond. This project has already been on show in Moscow, where it was inaugurated, then in St. Petersburg, and it's already planned to be exhibited in various other cities in Russia, and not only in Russia, but also in some of the very exciting cities of the BRICS countries. It was already unveiled to the people of Brazil at the Rio Planetarium on March 26, and it's going to be exhibited also in Mumbai, in India, Beijing, in China, and Durban in South Africa. Recently, we celebrated the Cosmonautics Day, that was April 12th, the day when Yuri Gagarin, the first human being, flew to space. And Russia, the then USSR, showed the world that anything is possible if we dare to dream and work tirelessly towards making this dream a reality. 
Today, we celebrate the 63rd anniversary of this historic moment in mankind, and it gives me goosebumps to think how much we have progressed in just over half a century. Coming back to BRICS universe, we function in various phases, the first being the formation of creative teams in the BRICS countries, followed by the collection of photographic materials, and finally, the screening and selection of the best photo materials from both space and UNESCO creative cities. Then we prepared and hosted these exhibitions, starting from the Museum of Cosmonautics in Moscow, just as I mentioned a few moments ago, and then moving on to different Russian cities and abroad. So here on my screen, you can see a layout of the timeline of the entire project. As of now, we are still running these exhibits, both in Russia and abroad. So all of you who have joined this event today, please make sure to visit this exhibit when it comes to your country or city. And I can guarantee it will be one of the most unique experiences of your life so far. Well, since I'm an Indian, in India, we often say behind every success, there is a woman. And when you look at the core team of the BRICS Universe project, you can guess why it's such a major success. So I would request you all to send words of appreciation and love for these amazing people who toiled hard to transform this dream into a reality. Please send your appreciation in the chat section below. And finally, I would like to thank all our partners and supporters without whose help we couldn't have achieved anything. That's exactly the teamwork that we portray here. And I would urge all of you in the audience today to come forward and extend your hand of collaboration to turn not only your dream into a reality, but also someone else's dream. So that's all that I had to say to you today. Thank you so much for being such an enthusiastic audience. And I would be happy to interact with you more in the chat section. This is Subrajit Barwa signing off. With the entire existence of our forum, we have never had an Ethiopian speaker. Time to fix it. Our next speaker is Dr. Yericho Berhanu Mesesha, PhD Academic Program Director of the Bonga University, Ethiopia. Dr. Yericho, nice to meet you. Hello, everybody. How are you? This is Yericho Berhanu from Ethiopia, Bonga University. Now I'm going to deliver uh, some information on Yaws and Ethiopia's diplomacy, and I would like to share you some experiences on the role of uh, Ethiopian Yaws in Ethiopian diplomacy. So maybe as you know that Ethiopia is one of the oldest country in Africa, and the emergence of Ethiopian civilization dates back to several thousands of years ago. So the country is rich uh, with diverse historical dates back thousands of years, including ancient and Aksumites and Ethiopian empires. So having this, Ethiopia has long-standing diplomacy experience, and also Yaws has been, been in, uh, involved in Ethiopian diplomacy for a long period of time. So when we say public diplomacy, it includes communicating with foreign policies to promote the interest of the country and also the value of the country as well as the culture of the country. So in this regard, numerous initiatives have been taken by Ethiopian youths to promote the culture, interest and, uh, and also the values of the country uh, for a long time period. So as I told you before, so Yaws has significant role in empowering the country and also they play a uh, numerous leadership role in which they, they play their role in sustainable, sustainable development of the country as well as uh, and, and, and maintaining and, and keeping the interest of the, the country to be, to be uh, one of pillar uh, agenda at global level. As you can see here, here uh, in the picture you can see AMREF is held in Africa, the Ethiopian Yaws which has been mobilizing different initiatives and so to make social impact and in Ethiopia and beyond, which has been one of good examples. So here also just uh, we do have Yaws lead initiatives in Ethiopia, which is which has been working for public uh, diplomacy, as you you see uh, in the picture in, under Kefta. So we do have uh, two female uh, Yaws who are uh, state minister of the. 
in Ethiopia, which has been working in art culture and also engaging and promoting Ethiopia's uh, heritage and resource management and also innovative cultures and social values and addressing also this uh, social challenge in Ethiopia and which in which creating uh, in enhancing the image of the country at global level so it's really important to communicate and global relationship and unity and peace in this regard Ethiopian Yaws has been playing a significant role uh, in diplomacy so numerous young people represent the country especially in athletics field and the young Ethiopians have been uh, uh, joining different athletics, especially in 5,000 kilometer and uh, 10,000 kilometer running, male and female, which has been uh, uh, creating good opportunity for Ethiopia and, um, and promoting the country's culture and also development in this, in this regard. So your engagement in Ethiopia initiative is really important because it has been creating networking and also it has been creating cultural exchange and play significant role in, 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 in leadership development. So we do have uh, more than 20 impactful projects in Ethiopia, which has been led by public diplomacy projects in Ethiopia, which contributes to uh, creating the Ethiopian image at global at large. So give us uh, from this project, we understand that we found more than 95% of positive feedback because of uh, this international partnership and diplom diplomatic commitments and uh, diplomatic community sorry the um, um, uh, the feedback what we get from this yaws diplomacy was really successful so this is really one of wonderful achievement what we did for example here in african yaws leadership diplomatic conference which was kicked off in addis and in uh, february 23 2024 so uh, the african yaws leadership uh, uh, meeting was held with the presence of more than 150 years delegates from African countries attending uh, the conference that has been um, uh, was done in Ethiopia in Addis. So this conference was organized by Ethiopian Youth Dialogue for Peace Association, so which is uh, in collaboration with um, Ministry of Women, Social Affairs, and uh, Addisaba City Administration. Really, in this way, we promote our culture and the interest of the country as well as the values of uh, Ethiopia was was promoted and this trend also will be uh, engaged and uh, promoted in the next time. So as other is what the best example is what was uh, done is um, World Yaws Festival in Sochi in Russia. So Ethiopian Yaws has been engaged in this and in which uh, we have created a numerous initiatives that has been implemented for the future and networking and social exchange has been done in this especially Ethiopian delegates has been working or has been done on a great initiative on coffee diplomacy in which the coffee culture of Ethiopia was promoted and uh, and the ceremony was inaugurated in there and then really we get the positive feedback on that one and that was also one of the wonderful events which was recently observed. But there is some challenge uh, regarding to Yaws diplomacy even though the potential of Yaws diplomacy and uh, the, pr uh, the pro progress was very nice, still there is uh, some challenge in which the first one is just lack of experience in diplomatic protocols and procedures and the other is a limited resource for Yaws diplomacy in initiatives and also the experience so this has been uh, so this has been this can be um, uh, uh, solved through collaboration and cooperation among uh, different organizations so these are some challenges but also there is some uh, opportunities and uh, collaboration with our partners and growing interest and recognition of Yao's contribution in diplomacy and also growing number of uh, Yao's population is a great opportunity to, 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 to proceed. So what I can say lastly is Yao's is really important and uh, they play a crucial role in the Ethiopia's uh, public diplomacy and created positive impact, global impact. And also uh, it's, this opportunity provides empowering Yao's to lead sustainable diplomatic growth and development 
and but the problem is as I mentioned before there is some challenge so that challenge we can be solved through cooperation and collaboration with different uh, uh, organizations in different countries so just like for example the BRICS collaboration can create positive impact on supporting youth diplomacy in Ethiopia and beyond so and for the future what we can say is um, future holds uh, limitless opportunities for youth in diplomacy so we have to encourage and uh, let's work together and let's stand together so we can uh, have uh, impactful uh, impactful public diplomacy together so that together we can thank you very much for your attention uh, thank you Yeriko it was really interesting and now let's get back to Brazil Luan Skliar presidency advisor of the Brazil China Economic Development Chamber zonal organization secretary of the Workers Party in Rio de Janeiro independent journalist from Brazil. Luan, please, you now have the floor. A moment, please. Okay, so first off, I would like to extend my gratitude to our hosts and also Mr. Florentino from the National Youth Secretariat, uh, Secretariat of Brazil for his insightful presentation uh, in the previous section. Uh, I would also like to thank the Russian presidency of the BRICS Plus for or organizing today's events and for creating numerous opportunities for the youth of the Global South. Uh, moving on to our project. Uh, although I am the president of the advisor of the Brazil-China Economic Development Chamber, today I'm going to introduce you to, you to a new project that we are being conducting. Uh, so the IBRICS Plus, the Cultural Exchange and Economic Development Institute for the BRICS Plus countries. What a name, huh? Uh, so the IBRICS Plus is, uh, is an institute focused on spreading good practice in regional government, uh, governance that we, we are developing among subnational uh, institutions in Brazil and China, particularly in terms of economic development through integration and partnership. Uh, we strongly believe that many of the regional issues in Brazil can be addressed with a global approach. So moving on to context and concept. Uh, just a few context so you know what is going on in Brazil and etc. So Brazil is a country of over than uh, 5,500 municipalities. Uh, 300 of them uh, have a population exceeding 100,000. So despite uh, having a, a advanced economy, economy, much of our pro productive capacity remains idle, uh, coupled with logistical limitations. But right now with President Lula returning to the highest executive office, uh, there is renew, uh, renewed hope. With the launch of the new growth acceleration program, Novo PAC, uh, the federal government is investing more than $300 billion in infrastructure, education, and social development projects. So uh, about Brazilian youth and labor market. Uh, here we outline some of the challenge, main challenges faced by the Brazilian youth. Uh, although our literacy rate is kind of high, uh, I mean, it's approximately nine, uh, 95%, uh, but poverty and lack of belief in the future uh, significantly impact in the school retention. So uh, leaving school to work is a reality for many Brazilians, often in precarious and informal jobs. The search for the first job is also challenging, not because not only because of the employment rate uh, rating among young people, but also due to lack of the technical capacitation. However, we generally have positive outlooks, such as the expansion, expansion of the Federal Institute of Education, Science and Technology, network with the construction of 100 new units. Uh, in that sense, our main goal is to establish a specific project to meet regional demand uh, in accordance with global demand for implementation of solution. Uh, in the first step of the initiative, talking about establishing a method, uh, methodology now, 
uh, we have to establish a methodology. Uh, as an institution rooted in Brazilian municipalities and regions, we can rely on the support of the Federal Institutes Network, as well as universities. Uh, the second step is to identify, stimulate, and sensitize Brazilian public officials about partnerships with BRICS Plus regions, where we will find potential partnerships. So following this step, we will promote decentralized academic and business collaboration in these regions for economic development. Uh, through this collaboration, we hope to address the uh, we hope to address the shortage of uh, project engineers in Brazil for the next years. Uh, with this scenario, we aim to create and seek collaboration solutions for cre uh, collaborative solutions for Brazil, thereby also en uh, enhancing the positive influence of the BRICS Plus in Latin America. But why do I keep talking about Brazil and China? Uh, as I mentioned before at the beginning of the, of, of the presentation, uh, our me methodological, uh, methodological base would be, uh, would be modeled on the Brazil-China institutional frameworks. Well, in the last year, uh, bilateral trade uh, has surpassed $100 billion, and China is one of our major partners in project development. But not only in the sense of a national collaboration, but also uh, with subnational uh, collaboration with uh, subnational institutions. So the public uh, diplomacy institutional model is multifaceted. Uh, it is right now in the process of consolidation. Uh, we have successful, uh, successful example of cooperation between regional and municipal governments between Brazil and China which will bring uh, some kind of agility and reliability to our methodological approach. Uh, now, uh, our idea, our basis is the, the global solutions going regional. So with the BRICS Plus framework, we have a, we have a historic opportunity. Our youth are aware of their challenges that they face in their normal life, in their regular, uh, they, their daily basis, in a daily basis. Uh, so through public diplomacy, we can integrate uh, Brazilian regions into global solutions, also immediately and objectively, uh, enhancing the visibility of the opportunities that BRICS Plus has to offer to Brazil and also to Latin America. Uh, this includes integrating uh, youth to uh, to the labor market and higher education, also multi uh, develop, developing infrastructure in the regions that we have uh, located some issues that we can address a global approach, uh, multilateral partnerships for social and economic inclusion, and cooperation between Brazil and China, uh, sorry Brazil and the others BRICS plus countries. So. Uh, now about our um, uh, institutional uh, presentation. Uh, so we have think about uh, a suggestion about the logo uh, that has emerged from the understanding that Bix Plus is now entering a new phase. Uh, we believe that this group will now evolve into an entity with more defined instru uh, structures. And our, our proposal uh, reflects the so this consolidation as solid as a block of concrete. This express our vision and what we expect for, for the collaboration and for the cooperation among uh, uh, BRICS plus countries and institutions. Uh, we also have pro uh, proposals for institutional approximation uh, on the, the BRICS plus launch calendar and some criteria for impact assessment but since the time is advancing, uh, I will save this for this this part of presentation for another occasion. And that's it. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, thank you, Diana, for everything you have been organizing and helping to put together everything, put together uh, all the BRICS countries and the BRICS youth. And we are here to help. And 
we expect that things will go better, better and better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, dear Luan. Thank you for sharing your experience and vision. And I hope our, uh, we will continue our cooperation and our partnership will be very fruitful and useful for our countries. Thank you. So uh, now let me, let me ask you, dear participants, how do you feel, really? I mean, your mood. Please show some emotions using Zoom emojis. Uh, I would like to ask, are you alive? <laughs> Don't... <laughs> Uh, aren't you worried? So let's continue and don't forget to ask, thank you for your emojis, yeah. Don't forget to ask questions in the chat and dear experts, please answer the questions also in the chat or uh, we will give you the opportunity to answer um, in our online format. Well, let's continue. Yeah. And now we move on to the last but not the uh, not uh, last but not the least speaker of our case session. It is our honor uh, for us to give the floor to Dr. Mohammad Hussain uh, Tag, uh, Tagizadeh, Director General of the International Activities Department of the Minister, Ministry of Sport and Youth, uh, Youth of the Islamic Republic of Iran, a new member of BRICS. Please, the floor is yours. Hello. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me in this meeting. Uh, do you have my voice? Yes. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Young people are the force of the growth and development of all societies. Paying attention to youth affairs and getting to know young people from other countries is one of the tools of uh, the development of public diplomacy. For example, getting to know young businessmen and forming a network of young businessmen from different countries or young entrepreneurs or young people who are active in artistic matters and can be ambassadors of their country's culture and civilization and create cooperation networks with other young people of the world. These are some good examples of the usage of youth diplomacy. In our country, we have had valuable experiences in youth diplomacy. For example, hosting the youth of Tajikistan and Azerbaijan and introducing them to the use of the Islamic Republic of Iran. The two last were uh, two good experiences for us and uh, for the youth people, for, for youth team of Azerbaijan and Tajikistan that came into Iran. Hosting, uh, excuse me, the presence of youth of the Islamic Republic of Iran in the World Summit as an example of the World Youth Festival in Suchi, Russia. This is the good example of youth diplomacy in the world, I think. The Suchi Summit is one of the good example of uh, youth diplomacy in the world. As well as climate change meeting in Baku, Azerbaijan. Also, our youth have been successful in voluntary works and activities to help the victims and renovate deprived area. The development of public diplomacy is very important for every country, especially for our country, Islamic Republic of Iran, that in our country, I think uh, we have, have uh, four, uh, more than 40% of our national uh, nations are youth. The development of youth diplomacy is very important for every country. Successful countries are those whose youth get to know the use of other countries and provide opportunities for growth and development. The platform for these activities will be activated 
by public diplomacy. Youth diplomacy and sport diplomacy both contribute to the public diplomacy of countries, you know. And countries that are successful in these two areas will have very strong public diplomacy. We hope that BRICS organization, which has been successful in public diplomacy, will create a cross platform for young people and athletes so that we can see the cross of the public diplomacy. Thank you so much. And thanks for inviting me in this meeting. Hmm. Uh, we, uh, we are really appreciate your efforts. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. And now let's take up some questions from the chat. Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, we have a lot of questions again, and I'm very happy to see your um, activities. So the first questions uh, for, ev uh, uh, for everyone. Thank you, everyone, for beautiful presentations. Really can't, can't wait to participate more with these informative sessions of interaction from all corners of the world we, uh, with great minds and ideas. We can achieve a lot of the, uh, the moments we start doing partnership that will fruit, uh, fulfill our dreams. Yes, thank you, uh, dear uh, Mangaliso Nkosi. And please don't miss the next session. It will be the brainstorming, and you can share your idea or you can uh, listen to the ideas of your uh, like minded people, like minded colleagues. And uh, I, I'm sure that you can implement something joint in the nearest future in the uh, being a part of the multinational team, uh, BRICS Plus team. So the next question is to, uh, I think, uh, is Florentino uh, with us? I I'm still worried that he fell asleep. <laughs> no, he's here. He's here? Yeah. Okay, Florentino, we have a yeah, question yeah. to you, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Akil, can, could, could you read, please? Uh, this one? Yes, about games, media, yeah. So, uh, we have an interesting question from our participant from Russia. Uh, that is, are there any good initiatives in your countries in building cultural soft power through any form of entertainment, media, such as movies, games, etc.? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we recently in Brazil created a program that we call Pedimeia. It's the name of the, the, the program. And this program creating from the Minister of Education to combat school dropout. Unfortunately, uh, here in Brazil, we have many people who leave school due to the social inequality. And because of that, the government created this program, uh, this uh, I call uh, Pedimeia, to guarantee an incentive of like $50 per month for more than 2 million young people who receive less than 2 minimal age. And because of that, we understand that this program will be have to improve all statistics to better now at That's the country. And because of that, the our priority too is also to be invested in basic education and the public uh, university. Uh, so about something like movies or game, I suggest I don't I don't play games, but I suggest a film for to understand more Brazil. It's called Bacurau. I uh, will send the link of the the chat for if you want to understand more about Brazil. This this really this film is really good to understand. And if you want to know about your program program to the Pedimeia, I will send the link on the chat. Okay, thank you very much, Florentino. I see uh, that our uh, speakers, uh, Suprajit and Kira, answer uh, your questions. Thank you very much for your activities in the Zoom chat. And the next question is to Dr. Mohammed, uh, to Iran. Uh, Dr. Mohammed, is there any organization in Iran working for sport diplomacy? Uh, Anna asks, Anna from Russia. Dr. Mohammed, could you please answer? Uh, yes, 
we have some uh, different and some various organization in Iran for uh, public diplomacy in many fields. For example, culture, language, uh, film, movies, theater, uh, music, and the other organization. Okay, thank you. Anna would like to offer you cooperation in this sphere. Uh, we already have cases implemented in Russia. I think your co cooperation will be uh, very fruitful. Thank you uh, for your answer. <laughs> There is one more question. It one is more. also for Iran. Okay. Uh, there are any organizations in Iran engaged in public diplomacy, for example, uh, the Gorchakov Foundation in Russia? Yes, for example, we have uh, an organization named Saadi. Saadi organization uh, for uh, public diplomacy, especially in uh, the language field. Mm -hmm and linguistics. And some organization, for example, Home of Theater, uh, House of Theater, excuse me, uh, in the field of movies. Mm -hmm. And some various organization whose activities are in the field of public diplomacy. And in Iran, we have more than uh, 4,600 NGOs, youth NGOs. 4,600 NGOs for youth affairs. Okay. Is there any question? No, 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 thank you. Thank we you. are very, you know, impressed. Uh, 4,006 uh, 100 NGOs. It's a very good uh, prospect to cooperate with uh, Iranian young people. Okay, uh, the next question. How could BRICS Plus youth agitate for a BRICS Plus university which will educate about 1 million students across BRICS Plus nations and deepen multilateral relations? Mm, it is a very good question uh, and uh, the, uh, this Domain will be one of the thematic tracks of the nearest future BRICS Youth Summit. Please uh, follow us and I hope you can be a participant. If it is the a participant of South Africa, be proactive. And uh, NYDA, uh, National Youth Development Agency, maybe we, we will choose you for participation uh, in BRICS Youth Summit. It is very important subject. Uh, okay. Uh, Next questions, Akil, do we have Yes, more? there mm -hmm. is one question, uh, the question for uh, Brazilian speaker. What is the policy of the BRICS plus towards the Caribbean and the greater Atlantia, uh, Atlantis, uh, especially Cuba, Haiti, and uh, Dominican Republic? Mm. I'm afraid that uh, the case session so, included not government bodies, but if you are ready to answer, please feel free. Okay, so I think we have to strengthen this okay, relationship in the region. I believe that the Caribbean and the Latin American culture should be more involved in these kind of activities and not so, but get to into the BRICS too. Maybe in another opportunity we can involve this, this country. And I think about uh, because of this kind of question, this is, can be a suggestion to we discussed in this kind of things in uh, other X space about at the youth council or at the summit to involve this country of the Caribbean, the American countries. Okay, thank you, Florentina. Uh, if uh, our speaker, uh, Mr. Trebo here, uh, we have a question. Do we have diplomatic work for Sabia for people with disabilities? Uh, Dorcus asks. Are you here, Mr. Tsepo? Uh, we will send him your question and uh, we will ask him to answer in the Zoom chat. Thank you for your uh, question. And we have a question to Sergei Arlov, but uh, he will join us in a couple of minutes, I think. Alexander, could you please tell Sergei Arlov to answer the question in the Zoom chat, uh, if it is possible? And uh, Continue. Uh, let us continue. Okay. Mm. Ira asked, uh, answer. Thank you very much. Excellent. Uh, the 
message for you, Mr. Luan. Excellent overview of the labor market in Brazil and an even more amazing project that you are building. It is a pleasure to call you a camarada. Yes, same, same to me, it is a pleasure to call you a camarada. So do you have uh, more questions, dear participants? Iranian expert. Question to Iranian expert. Are there organizations in Iran involved in science diplomacy with other countries? Mr. Mohammad? Yeah. Yes. Uh, our universities, all over Islamic Republic of Iran, has a branch whose name is uh, International Department, all of universities, all of our universities. If you want to have a connection with our universities in Iran, uh, you can refer uh, to their sites. All of our Iranian universities have a special uh, sites in internet and you can connect with them. Uh, our arms in science technology, in science diplomacies, our universities, or our universities in Iran. We have a ministry, uh, Ministry of Science and uh, Technology in Iran, which is a, a governmental body for a progress of science diplomacy. And if you want to connect with uh, our culture organization, which are active in public diplomacy, uh, you can search uh, Saadi organization. Could you please write uh, the name in the Zoom chat, please, Mr. Mohammad? Yes. Thank yes. you. And this moment, I will, uh -huh. uh, I will read another question to you. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mohammad from Iran, I would like to know if there are any diplomatic partnership program established with Brazilian organizations to promote Iranian culture or anything related to this. I'm very interested in Iranian culture and would be very interested in participating in such Brazil-Iran cooperation. Uh, uh, Vinicius yes. asks. Mm -hmm. As I know in Brasilia, we have a representative in the Islamic Republic of Iran embassy in Brasilia. A representative of culture. We have a representative of culture, Iranian culture, in the embassy. And my friend in Brazil, you can connect with them. They are in charge of uh, culture diplomacy which is a branch of public diplomacy. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mohammad. Yeah, now we have one more question uh, from Igor Lurusov. Uh, thank you for your speeches. I have a question. Uh, where? <laughs> I have a question concerning the development of uh, ties between the youth, civil and political activi uh, activists across the BRICS. So is there any opportunity to hold the summit or establish an organization of the youth parliaments among the BRICS countries? Maybe you can reply for this? Yeah, I, I read another questions, please. Uh, could you yeah. come again? Um, it is for holding an organization uh, for youth parliaments. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, this is very um, popular question from uh, young young leaders from BRICS countries. And I really would like to wish you ask, uh, pr propose this idea in the uh, brainstorm. Because of you need to uh, promote your ideas and your wishes. And uh, I, I, I will ask my colleagues from Russian Federal Agency uh, for Youth Affairs to participate in the next session and sometimes, you know, uh, youth ideas could be basic uh, for youth uh, policy development. I hope it could be uh, after our forum as well. And I would like to add something on this. Please. Uh, I remember in 2017 uh, there was a BRICS Youth Parliament Forum, uh -huh. uh, but after that it was uh, not happened again. Mm -hmm. So I think it could be a good uh, opportunity to propose and start one more time 
uh, a kind of BRICS youth parliament. Why not? Thank you, Akil. Okay, we have a lot. Uh, we have a question to uh, Ethiopian speaker, but uh, now he leave the, uh, left the uh, conference. But we will ask. Uh, we will send uh, him the question from Daniel. Okay, dear participants, I think uh, uh, enough for Q and A session. Uh, let's continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are approaching to the most active session of today's forum, InterES 4.0, the networking and brainstorming session opportunities to strengthen youth ties. But first, let's have a break. Uh, it could be for breakfast or lunch or dinner. It depends on your country and time. See you in an hour. One hour. One yes. hour. Dear participants, dear friends, colleagues, see you in one hour and be ready to share your ideas. See you soon. See you soon. <laughs>